Hello and welcome back to a new video here on the Ludwig Fusel channel. Today we're going to continue on our journey through D3D12 in our series D3D12 Es. Now uh, in the last videos we have successfully created ourselves a swap chain that automatically resizes itself when the window is resized. And what we're left with is, well if I press a 5, I'm going to get a full screen window which is completely black and it is driven by our swap chain 60 frames per second because it's synced to the monitor. And we we now have an area where we can draw on with DirectX 12 because we have a swap chain. A swap chain is basically all the infrastructure that we need to draw. All the data is there and you think you could draw, but you can't really. Uh, all the data is there, all the objects are there, but there are still many things to do before we can draw it and we're going to explore this step by step. Now today I want to actually talk about what the swap chain is behind the scenes because currently we are creating a swap chain and it's kind of like a big black box. We have a swap chain, we call resize buffers on them. Uh, at some point, where's my present function? Uh, we call present on them. Uh, we did many things with the swap chain and yeah, we just basically called functions on that black box and the black box was exactly doing what we need. However, to continue on with DirectX 12 and understand how a swap chain works and to actually use the swap chain for drawing, we need to understand what is inside of the black box. We don't need to really understand all of the features of that black box because there are many, many crazy things going on, like uh, talking with certain DSGI APIs to uh, get access to the monitor, actually ask the monitor to release its buffer and give it to DirectX 12, talking with the desktop manager and many, many operating stuff, uh, operating system stuff is going on behind the scenes that is required so that we can actually draw that, so that Windows can actually release that portion of the screen to DirectX for drawing or even like the whole screen and the full screen optimizations to draw on the on the monitor and to directly have a handle to that actually screen buffer that's actually been then sent to the GPU and not doing some copying on, on, on like the desktop manager to then display the full screen. There's many, many things going on behind the, uh, the behind the scene, behind that black box called swap chain that we really don't need to understand. However, there is one important concept. I, we already explained it a bit that we need to understand to basically know how we can abuse the swap chain to now do rendering. So uh, what we have done previously is we have resized the buffer, we have created the buffer, and we have dealt a lot with buffers and presenting, like double buffering, triple buffering, everything that I've explained. And we always talked about buffers, and that's the main concept that you need to understand. The swap chain internally holds buffers for us. It manages them. It manages us the state of them. It manages that they are getting displayed. It manages that we can get these buffers. And that's what we need to understand. We have buffers inside the swap chain, as many as we specify. We specify uh, get frame count, which are two buffers. We specified the size. We specified the format of these buffers. We specified a hell of a lot of more information on these buffers. And we told the swap chain to use these buffers by calling present and the swap chain behind the scenes talked with the operating system, did all the complicated stuff to let these buffers end up on the screen. However, what we now need to understand what these buffers actually are to be able to draw. Because DirectX 12, well, you're not going always going to draw to the swap chain, right? The swap chain, it is kind of like just a concept to communicate uh, with the monitor, with the screen. That's the only like purpose that really happens. To communicate with the window or with the screen. That's the only thing the swap chain is doing. But we need to understand how rendering works. However, rendering works independently of a screen. You do not need to render to a screen with DirectX 12. You can render to like a buffer, not a screen buffer managed by the swap chain. You can create all that stuff on your own and render to it. You could actually even try to manually call these operating system RPs and manually implement yourself um, a swap chain. You could also try to do that, but it's not recommended. You should not do that. And I think some of the RPs might not even be exposed publicly. But you could try to abuse them and you probably would find a way to do that. You could, for example, render to a buffer, copy it to the CPU and do a bit blend on the uh, CPU side with the uh, classical Win API to display the buffer. Would not recommend that, but this is all possible. DirectX 12 is not limiting you to that. DirectX 12 just needs a buffer to render. And it always needs a buffer to render. You cannot tell DirectX 12 to draw on a swap chain because the swap chain, it is, it is a black box. It is just a concept of DXGI to talk with the operating system, but it's not a D3D12 thing. DXGI is a swap chain. It is infrastructure code around it, not DirectX 12. And DirectX 12 actually made that separation. DirectX 11, you kind of like were able to integrate the, the swap chain directly with the rendering APIs more or less. 
but DirectX 12 has a strict separation between these two. DXGI, D3, 12, different thing. What DXGI is doing actually, it is internally managing the 3D12 objects. And now there is where these two things come together. The swap chain, our black box, is internally holding DirectX 12 objects because, well, we called it in a DirectX 12 way. We gave it a common queue and therefore it knows we are on DirectX 12 and it has created itself internally on the DirectX 12 way. And what we need to do is we need to obtain a reference to these internal DirectX 12 objects to be able to render. And that's what we want to do at the end of the day. We want to render to that screen. Now, internally, it is holding something called an ID3D12 resource. An ID3D12 resource is any resource that might live on a GPU. So everything that has memory associated to it. It could be anything. Most of the time, it's going to be a buffer. A buffer could be just a series of bits. A buffer could be a texture. Texture 2D, 1D, 3D, and many, many more things. Not even that many things, but in general, a resource can be multiple things. In our case, the resource that's holded by the uh, swap chain is a D, 3D, 12, texture 2D. A two-dimensional texture. And actually, that makes sense because the texture is an image. And two-dimensional means it has two dimensionals, X and Y. And if you take a look at this, when we created it, width and height, X and Y. That is kind of like what we have created. X and Y texture that is the size of the screen, an image that has the size of the screen. This is what we specified the swap chain to. This is what the swap chain internally created as an ID3D12 resource. And what it's internally holding references to and managing to basically put on the screen. That is what it's doing, but it's not doing more than that. It's just having a ID3D12 resource internally that is a texture 2D or happens to be a texture 2D. And this texture 2D happens to be a representation of a buffer. A buffer basically means something where you couldn't put data on it. In this case, it is our back buffer or yeah, in general, I would just always call it like back buffer because uh, you ran a target back buffer. Kind of like the idea. It's kind of like the buffer that needs to be presented on the screen. And I tend to always call it back buffer because, but it's not always a back buffer. Um, because it's actually two things. It's a back buffer and a render target. But, uh, yeah, this is a bit too complicated now. Um, it is internally holding two buffers in our case. And these buffers, sex textures to d are resources. And what we need to do if we want to take control of these resources, so render to that back buffer, uh, clear the back buffer, make sure the back buffer is in the right state to actually render to, make sure it's in the right state to be presented. Uh, we need to do all of that stuff on our own. We need to obtain the reference to it. We need to make sure that's in the right state. We need to render to it. We need to clear it maybe at some point. We need to put it in the state so that we can put it on the screen. And then we need to tell the XGI now put it on the screen. So in general, it is holding these buffers and we need to hold them as well to do something with it. So we need to obtain these buffers from the swap chain. And that's what we wanted to do today. We wanted today get the reference to these buffers and maybe we're also going to dive into how uh, resource transitions and yeah, kind of like modifying the state of these buffers works. But let's see how far we're going to get. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to obtain the buffer from the swap chain. Now, first of all, what we need is we need to have a way to actually store them. And as I told you, these are ID3 trap resources and we have actually two of them because get frame count two. Now, um, well, let's hold them. How do we going to hold them? Well, we're basically going to put them in a comp pointer, ID 3D12 resource. Yeah, resource 2. Let's take that one and then call this M buffers. Now, you could, of course, do like M buffer 1 and M buffer 2. However, that's not a good idea. Actually, what we want to do is we want to just call them M buffers. And there we go. Let's do it as an array. And let's allow, let's get the frame count and make the size of the array the frame count. Ha, we see it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because C is kind of weird. It can't evaluate that cons expression um, so we actually need to do a little trick here uh, static uh, cons expression size t frame count equals two want to quickly do it like that and then i want to instead of returning the number directly return the frame count here and yeah now we can use a frame count here as an array size and now we are done buffers created here as an array all right so now we have an array of frame count buffers in our case too now we just need to have a way to obtain these buffers well let's do it straightforward let's go to the window.cpp uh, and after the creation of the swap chain let's now get buffers now how can we get the buffers well uh, we just run write a for loop uh, size ti equals zero i smaller uh, frame count plus plus i and then what i want to do is i want to get the buffer how do i get the buffer well i ask my swap chain for it because the swap chain is holding the buffers 
So it is managing them, it's creating them, it's resizing them, it's doing everything with these buffers. And we can get them by calling the get buffer function. It takes an index, which buffer we want to have. We want to have the buffer at uh, position i. And then we need um, the uh, pointer pointer to the buffer with iid pbv args. So let's do that. Um, uh, buffers also at position i. And that's everything that we need. Get these buffers like that. We could basically check this if this is failed. Um, we could quickly say return false, but that's, yeah, that's just some, some checkings that you might not want to have or might not need, but let's put them in here, right? If the get buffers fails, we return false. So that's all the code that we need to get our buffers. Now, what we also want to do is we, of course, want to release our buffers at the end of the day because we want to release them in the same order that everything has been created. So down here at my uh, shutdown function, I'm basically just going to copy my for loop in here, and then I'm just going to go at M buffers at position R and then call the release function on them so that they are all going to get released in the correct order. And that's actually what we need to do. So now if I press a 5, I would suspect that I now have a reference to the buffer and everything else still works as it should. And as you can see, we have a window. Everything seems good. Yeah, the window is still resizable. Uh, I can move it around here, uh, move it to there, maybe make it a bit wider, maximize it again, go to F11, go out of F11 and close it and everything seems good, right? Well, you could think of that, but later on you might gonna see an issue. Or you're probably gonna see an issue. You're not, not gonna might gonna see an issue. The might issue might not be obvious when you now continue on and never fix the problem that we actually have. Uh, but we actually have a problem. You can see we do not have living objects, so reference counting seems to be good. However, if we scroll a bit up, uh, you're gonna find a DXGI error that we actually got. Uh, we do not have like proper log logging in our application. Maybe I'm gonna slap SPD log in there at some point so that we can also get a bit of proper logging. But yeah. Let, let's see if I did it. Uh, what you can see is that we get a DXGI error. IDXGI swap chain resize buffer. Swap chain cannot be resized unless all outstanding buffer references have been released. Okay, so what is that error message telling us? Our error message is telling us that the swap chain was not able to resize itself, and it's actually true. Uh, we are not checking the return value of resize buffers. If we would check the return value, maybe throw an exception, and then terminate our application, we would have catched the error. Might be misdesigned, but I don't want to like to have too much error handling in this application because I want to keep it simple. Uh, so yeah. This message is actually telling us exactly what we need to do. Well, before we're going to resize our swap chain, we need to make sure that all of the buffer references are actually deleted. Why do we need to make sure of that? Well, actually, because resizing the buffers is not a thing. You can't resize a buffer. There's no like, uh, like there's like malloc and free on the CPU. There's like a realloc that you could call that takes an existing memory point and your size and then kind of like finds a, a new block of memory that has the new size and then it copies the data over and then releases the other one. Uh, but there's not, no such thing on the GPU or the GPU. And like in general, what you always need to do if you're resizing your resource is you allocate a new resource of a bigger size, then you copy the data over and then you could release the resource that's smaller. Uh, on the buffer, it's actually uh, the a different thing. Um, on, 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 on the buffer, like on, on DirectX 12, it's actually, it can create that uh, without copying data over it if it's resizing that, because if we're resizing it, we're going to clear it anyway. So it doesn't need to do copying. It's not a real reallocation. However, then the main main thing that you need to know there is that resize buffers is actually releasing the old buffer and then creating a new one. And you can't release a buffer if the ref count is not zero because COM objects are going to be released when the ref count gets zero. But it doesn't get zero because we are holding references in that array here. We are holding a reference to that, which keeps the reference counts always to at least one, and that's what the API is yelling at. It basically uh, tries to release them itself, and if you call release, you carefully get now the existing ref count, and it sees that's not zero, so it's not going to be deleted, and then it basically just says, all right, resource buffers didn't work, okay, I'm going to fail here. Um, yeah. So what we want to do now is we want to fix that error. How do we fix it? Well, when we are resizing the buffer, we need to make sure that we release them and then that we get them back. So what we actually want to do is we want to factor out the code, get buffers and release buffers into their own functions. So let's write them in here. Void get buffers. Or actually, let, let's do them. Let's do it as a Boolean function, get buffers. And then let's do a void uh, release buffers. All right, get and release buffers. There we have our nice little handy functions. And let's now implement them. All right, get buffers. How are we going to implement them? Well, quite easy. We're going to steal the code from here or 
here and instead get buffers or actually here if not get buffers return false that's what we want to do get the buffers here now let's scroll down a bit until we find the on you get buffers function let's paste it in let's put a return true in here so that's all good and now we have it in its own function that we can call later on again now say we've released buffers but it's going to be a bit simpler because we do not need to have return values let's scroll a bit up let's steal the code same story short call the release buffer in the shutdown let's scroll down paste the code in here and good now existing functionality still the same now we need to fix this issue how do we fix that issue we're going to go to our resize function here it is and before we resize we want to release the buffers and just the buffers nothing else and then down here we want to get the buffers again so we release them then we do our resize and then we're going to retrieve them if resize actually hit it so we went inside of that if we're going to get the buffers of the new size if we didn't go in here yeah we're just going to get the old ones back not a big deal just a bit of code that you need to have always around and if i now try it we're going to see that the issue is going to disappear can go here a few bit nuts let's do it like that let's maybe do a resize like that move it around you can see we do not get any issues in the, in the console here could go again f11 f11 and exit out no living objects ref counting good and no d3d12 error in here just a bit of poco stuff that's hanging around here from like i think my this is trend micro my antivirus software i kind of like hate that it kind of like pokes out stuff in here but yeah <laughs> i need to live with that that's my antivirus my new one because norton triggered me too hard uh yeah uh but we don't care about that one um everything is good now buffers are correctly used and we're not going to talk about resource management today uh we're going to keep this as a short video to just talk about the buffers that we need to get them that we need to release them how they work what's the idea behind them and in the next video we're going to talk about resource states well because id3d12 has states and id3d12 resource has states we need to make sure that this is in the right state there's a state for rendering there's a state for presenting them there are multiple states for multiple things you can do to a buffer or in general to any resource that you could abuse and do stuff to it but not want to go too deep in that today we have the buffers now we can do something with them all right so thank you for watching see you in the next video make sure to like and subscribe and have a nice day bye